to Gilwell, happy land. I'm gonna work my ticket if I can. Okay, it's set down. Where's Mr. Wayne? Today is my distinct pleasure to recognize a scouter from the Hudson Valley Council who has completed their wood badge training. Will Dennis Simons please come forward? Simons? Simons. When you complete a course, someone hands you a thank you and gives you a certificate and says thank you. Wood badge is different. During the two weekends, participants write what is called a ticket. You might have heard people talking about this. It is a wood badge tradition that has roots in the 1800s. Back in Baden Powell's day, when a British soldier was stationed away from his home, his term of service was over, he was released to wherever he was stationed, and he had to pay his own fare to get home. So sometime before his service was due to be over, he tried to get postings that were closer and closer to home so that the army would pay for part of his cost to get back home. This was called working his ticket. In Wood Badge, each participant writes their own ticket consisting of five goals that they will work on after the course. And they are related to their scouting job, which will allow them to apply the skills they learn during the course. They have 18 months to do this. The participants are assigned a ticket counselor. This person, who is much like a merit badge counselor, serves as a guide, a friend, and provides support to help the participant complete their goals. When the participant convinces the ticket counselor <coughs> that he or she has completed their ticket, they have completed wood badge. Dennis took wood badge in the fall of 2012 at Camps New Teaming and Bulawa at course N7374-12. Oh. I was his course director, his scoutmaster, and I was Dennis's ticket counselor. He got the full deal. <laughs> and we didn't charge him extra for that. The ticket counselor's role is to provide support and guidance after the last day of the course in pursuit of the ticket goals. 
A troop guide's role is to ensure that each participant in his or her patrol receives the best program possible and has the tools that they need to work for their ticket. Helene Van Pelt from Dutchess District was his troop guide. Okay. Now here's where I change things. I change things throughout this whole course. I didn't have a typical patch. I did a CSP for a patch this time. I held it in two of our council camps because we have two wonderful properties and I wanted to expose people to something different. So I put it in both camps this time. And then I had them all come on the first day and they got to choose their own beads. They made the promise to themselves and that was their goal. There was something they could touch that they chose. The next thing I'm going to do different is I'm not going to place the beads around their neck. The ticket counselor wouldn't be doing that either. I want the patrol to come forward. Okay. See, they didn't know this, but they had the <laughs> But they all got an email that said, please be there. It's really important. Okay? Um, come on, you're all up here. Now you know what was kind of crucial for you guys to be here. Okay? Dennis will now receive four items from his patrol mates, which will identify him as having completed wood badge. As they are presented, I will tell you a little bit about each of them. That's a jar of beans. Move it to the top. Oh, hell, that's a. Yeah, what a coincidence! It's at the top. <laughs> yeah, it just bubbles up to the top when the time is right. He hasn't been shaking that jar. Yeah. <laughs> particular order, because you're the woman, you're going to get the piece and a white. You get the waffle. You get this. Oh, you are not left out, my friend. Okay. Please come up and remove his participant neckerchief and the waddle that he had to make. The <laughs> waddle. Yeah, you can finish yours? No. Okay. John has his beads. Probably the most recognized are the beads. Two wooden beads on a leather thong. During the African Zulu Wars in 1888, Baden Powell came into possession of a necklace of a thousand wooden beads that belonged to the African King Dini Zulu. After the first wood badge course, Baden Powell wanted to give the participants something other than a piece of paper to show they had completed the course. Thus, the tradition of awarding beads began. Actually, I'd like to make a correction real quickly. Sorry, congratulations. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the next item he will receive is a wood badge neckerchief. Okay. I'm going to model it for the audience. In the early days, the scouting facilities to train scouters were limited, and there were limited funds. To set up a training program in the permanent headquarters, it was required. The generous action of one individual changed that. In early 1919, Mr. W. Du Bois McLaren, a district commissioner, offered to buy and donate Gilwell Park, a rundown estate of 57 <coughs> acres with a manor house built in the 1790s to the scouting organization for camping and training. I hear it looks much like Camp Renaqua. We recognize Mr. McLaren's contribution to scouting by wearing the McLaren tartan. Now you can show him the front of the thing, the little green spot. Thing. The outside of the scarf is dove gray of color for humility, and the inside is pink for warmth of feeling. Every wood badge course, regardless of its geographical location, is held at Gilwell. Our flag shows every wood badger is a member of Gilwell Troop 1, representing the first course held. Now we need something to hold the neckerchief together. The woggle. <laughs> this being presented comes from the early days of wood badge in England when participants needed to make a fire with a bow and drill. One of the staff made a woggle out of leather string used to string the bow and found it worked as a neckerchief slide. Yet another tradition was born. The last thing that I need to do is I mentioned earlier the participants in Wood Badge course are divided up into patrols. 
They are named for eight animals, and wood badgers get mighty protective of their animals. There is a song that all wood badgers in America sing, and it illustrates the names of all the patrols. <clears throat> are there any beavers in the house? Just so happens. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I used to be a beaver, a good old beaver too. And now I'm finished beavering, I don't know what to do. I'm growing old and feeble, and I can beaver no more. So I'm going to work my ticket if I can. That's a ill, well, happy land. I'm going to work my ticket if I can. I used to be a Bob White, a good old Bob White too. And now I'm finished Bob Whiting, I don't know what to do. I'm growing old and feeble, and I can Bob White no more. So I'm going to work my ticket if I can. Back to Gilwell, happy land. I'm going to work my ticket if I can. Eagles? I used to be an eagle, a good old eagle too. And now I'm finished eagling, I don't know what to do. I'm growing old and feeble, and I can eat with no more. So I'm going to work my ticket if I can. Back to Gilwell, happy land. I'm going to work my ticket if I can. I used to be a fox, a good old fox too. But now I'm finished foxing, I don't know what to do. I'm growing old and feeble. I'm going to work my ticket if I can. Oh, yeah, that works. Back to Gilwell, happy land. I'm going to work my ticket if I can. Back to Gilwell, happy land. I'm going to work my ticket if I can.
Back to Gilwell, happy land. I'm gonna work my ticket if I can.